Barcelona. This lecture is on Barcelona. Barcelona has become the fashion and leisure center of the Western Mediterranean. Here the unique Catalan culture flourishes. Although Barcelona is bilingual, Catalan is increasingly popular. One Barcelona historian contends that the city has more than any other, more than any other city in France has more shops and more trees. And the, the, the most beautiful thing in Barcelona, in my opinion, is this gorgeous church, Sacra, uh, Sagrada Familia. Um, it is, it was, it was, uh, the architect is a man named Gaudi. He did it in the late 1800s. Until recently, it wasn't even finished. Um, he was very, very uh, prescient. He was far, far ahead of his time um, because he used symbols from nature. He did not use right angles. He did not use lines. He did not use squares. He used things as they grow in nature. And this is really the, uh, the height of the beauty of, Bar of uh, Barcelona. Everybody goes, goes to Barcelona and sees uh, Sagrada Familia. One of the most interesting things that I noticed when I, sorry, when I was there was that um, my wife and I went off to get something to eat and there was a Pakistani guy who was selling, uh, you know, that meat that they have on skewers. He spoke to us in English. He heard we were from New York and we became his uh, landsmen and uh, we were his people. So it's a very funny word. We were the people of the Pakistanis in the middle of Barcelona. Um, traditionally, Catalan culture has been independent but repressed in Spain. For these reasons, it has produced unique artists and uh, musicians, ones with very vibrant, fresh perspectives on culture. This spirit of discovery and newness is all over modern uh, Barcelona. And the interesting thing about it is Picasso was in Barcelona for a long time before he went to Paris. And what he did was he really took the, the colors and the forms and the shapes of what I consider the um, Islamic Mediterranean, and he turned it into this avant-garde art. Okay, this is um, the Park Güell. It was designed by Gaudi, and as he said, like, look at all the Islamic influences. Look at all the colors. Um, you, you would hardly think it, that it was real, even in a Christian country. Um, wouldn't you say so? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that is so abs absolutely exciting about Barcelona. Barcelona um, gives you a, a window into what we consider convivencia, which is, um, Spanish, Spanish historians say that at one point, Spain was such a mixture of Christian, Muslim, and Jewish culture that played off each other in terms of poetry, architecture, even religion. Uh, and it was only the Inquisition that ruined this. And uh, Barcelona, in the late 1800s, went back to this tradition. But the interesting thing about Gaudi is that he was a very religious conservative Catholic, nonetheless. So uh, when you go to Spain, um, the, stra the strangest thing is that don't expect what you would expect. It's different, you know. Um, and it's a very mixed country. Uh, did you know that there are Celts in Spain? I have no, no. idea. In Vigo, in northern Spain, the people have red hair and blue eyes, and the guys play bagpipes because they come from the same ethnic groups as the Scots and the Irish and the Welsh. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> the South is extremely Islamic, especially around Malaga uh, and Granada. And the North, Barcelona, Although it has a lot of Islamic influence, the Inquisition came to Barcelona a um, hundred years before it came to the rest of Spain. So it, it, is a, it is, the art is very avant-garde, but the culture for a long time was extremely Catholic, but there was a big fight. And during the Spanish Civil War in the 30s, um, Barcelona was a hotbed of the democratic and communist rebellion against Franco. So it's, um, Spain is never what you think it is, you know. Well, you know, the first time I went to Spain was in the late 60s, and I, I just thought it was a very, it would be a very, very Catholic country. And it is Catholic, but it's a lot of other things, too. And it, now it's less Catholic than it was ever before. Um, okay, let me go on. This, okay. This is down in the harbor. 
and um, <laughs> you can see the Islamic influence in the in the shape of the of the ark. It's really a mixture of Islamic influence and Roman and Roman influence. Um, do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have you have any ideas about it? It looks like the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. It is modeled on the Arc de Triomphe oh, in Paris. <laughs> yes. It's modeled on the Arc de Triomphe, yet it has Islamic influences yeah. because it's in Spain. Okay. Now we go further down. Uh, this is uh, a house that was designed by a Gaudi on Ram, Las Ramblas, which is the famous street where you have all kinds of guys on stilts walking up and down the street. And again, to me, that doesn't look like Christian architecture. It looks to be very, what do you think, Greg? Well, yeah, definitely. It no, doesn't look like any Christian architecture that I'm, that I'm aware of, because you would normally see a, a figure of a saint or a depiction of the, 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 the Madonna and Christ, but all these things are missing here. It's all missing because that Gaudi, even though he was a religious Catholic, he's going back to a tradition that predates uh, Christianity's arrival in the Iberian Peninsula, which is amazing. It's a lesson in tolerance and a, lex a lesson in that a culture, a culture that is mixed it is often the richer, richer culture because it benefits from Christianity, Judaism, Islamic ancient pagan things, everything. Okay. okay, this is one of the, there's a lot of water in Barcelona, and this is just one of the famous fountains. It wasn't done by Gaudi, it was done by somebody else. It's much more traditional. Uh, and much more traditional things are also there. But there's just a plethora of Gaudi and of, and of modernism. Okay. All right. Now that work there is that screams Islamic to me. Yeah, everything screams Islamic. There is there is nothing that I can see of um, you know Segovia and palaces and Christian kings and Ferdinand and Isabella. Nothing. It's all, and especially the colors. You know, generally speaking, Europeans don't use uh, such bright colors like that. Okay. Okay, this is a famous apartment house that was built by Gaudi. Say it, come on, tell me. Beautiful. Yeah, it's absolute. It is absolutely splendid. It is probably one of the most beautiful buildings uh, I ever saw in Spain, for sure. And um, look at the lattice work. Look at the stained glass windows. And the top, the way the windows are held in, is extremely Hispanic. And I'm sorry, it's extremely Islamic. You know, it's definitely uh, uh, just like Ray said. It's there's 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 nothing of the Christian there. Do you see any of anything? No, I don't see anything that you, no. There's no there's no human figure to, to, no. to make note of. Basically, except the person in the window looking out. Basically, the Christians in in Spain were Visigoths, and their architecture was much more Romanesque, Gothic, nothing like this. So, if you're going to go back to the origins of Spain, you have to go back. To the Islamic culture, and you have to go back to the Greek culture, and the Phoenician culture, and the Jewish culture. You really have to. It's a it's a wonderful melting pot. So Gaudi lived during what time again? What Gaudi time? lived in the late 1800s. 1800s. Yeah. And this works starts, I guess, 1890, around there. Okay. So Barcelona was completely re redone at the end of the 1800s. All right. Now, this is very interesting. This is the Miro Museum. Miro is a famous uh, artist from Mallorca. And it's, it's not an, a coincidence that he is in Barcelona because the Mallorca, one of the official languages in Mallorca besides Spanish, is Catalan. Because the, ca ca the Catalan people ruled Mallorca. And uh, the Inquisition, as I told you, came to Barcelona in the 1390s, and it also came to Mallorca. And what happened in Mallorca was the Jews were forced to convert. And anyone who, who had a name that was in a certain group of people uh, who had come from Jews, they were only allowed, till very recently, to marry each other. And Miro comes from that family. And the most interesting thing about Miro is that uh, Hitler had asked Franco to hand over these 
biological Jews um, during World War II, and Franco refused. And there's been speculation that the reason that he refused is um, <laughs> the Spanish nobility, the Spanish upper classes, um, have, have much Jewish blood because they, uh, because of the fact that they wanted the Jewish money, they let it go. And that's part of, that's part of the situation. And they also have much uh, Muslim blood. Um, there's a church right near here called Our Lady of Fatima. Who was Fatima? Fatima was a Muslim woman who was married to a Christian man and who converted. But the church is still Our Lady of Fatima. And I'm telling you, that's all over Spain. That's why I love the place so much. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a country that is so rich in cultures. Um, and I can't stress the fact that the Inquisition was a tragedy. And it, it really, for Spain went from the pinnacle of its glory down after that. Okay? Because great culture comes from everybody. It doesn't come from one religion. It doesn't come from one group. Period. Okay. And this is the last thing that I'm going to talk about. This is in a city called Girona. Girona is about an hour north of Barcelona. If you want to go to Girona when you're in Barcelona, you must take the express train. Don't take the local, it'll take you three hours. Girona was a city that to this day is called by the Barcelonians the Jewish city. Um, there was a, you know, great rabbis there, great commentators there. Uh, the, the head rabbi felt that he was forced to convert and converted in the 1390s, as did the whole Jewish community. And uh, the people who came from Jews who live in Girona uh, have been Catholic for generations. But there's still a word in, in Catalan which means business sense, which re relates back to the Jews. So um, again, it is you know quite a mixture and very, very interesting. There's the muse that's the museum. It's in a ritual bath. And it's right next to a gorgeous um, <laughs> 1400s cathedral with steps that were like, I mean, to get to the top of the steps, it took me like half an hour. But it's funny, <laughs> the synagogue was right next to the church. Yeah, the cathedral. And when you walk through Girona, it's, it's so picturesque. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's very cool. It's in the mountains. And... Uh, Basically, that's what Barcelona is: mountains and sea. It's on. It's on the. It's on the uh, coast of Brava, which has really wild nature, lots of beautiful rocks and beautiful uh, Mediterranean Sea. And we were, and we were, and we were, we were very, very lucky because I made a mistake. I was looking for a Best Western near the Picasso Museum in Barcelona. Well, we landed in Barcelona, and we went to the Basque Western in Barcelona, and they said, you have no reservation. I said, what? They said, no, your, your reservation is in this town called Calle de Stac, along the coast of Brava, where there is a current Picasso exhibit, but not a Picasso museum. So we went there, and we went to the spa, and it's a whole different world. It's uh, absolutely beautiful and <laughs> very relaxing. Yet, um, the Costa Brava is not calm. It's kind of wild, like Barcelona. Wild, eclectic, international, and just wonderful. Thank you very much, and thank you, my audience. Thank you, thank you Ray. Thank, thank you, Jackie. I appreciate it.